This is my coach, Mr. Bill. It's an honor to have you here. Just got done picking a few tomatoes. Nothing like the normal years, but we've got 100 pounds so far, give or take. And a normal year will be four to 600 pounds. The record I ever had in my lifetime was in 08. I picked 1,000 pounds of tomatoes and 13 plants. So I got a lot of work ahead of me, don't I? With that in mind, though, you're here for a story. A hundred years ago, World War I started. A hundred years ago this week. I had three great uncles fight and get drafted in that war, I should say. One of them made it over to Paris and he got influenza, a flu-like disease back there that killed millions of people. Well, he survived it in the hospital for so long that they finally just sent him home. He never saw actual combat. The second one, great uncle, saw combat, but in just short order he got gas, mustard gas, I assume, from the Germans. And they sent him home, never to be the same. The third great uncle, he was over there and fought and saw combat in the trenches. And he survived it, made it home. Made his home over here in Illinois, he did, old Leon. And about once a year, once every other year, he'd come out and visit us out here in southwest Nebraska. Good old boy. One time as a small, stupid kid, they was talking about World War I, and I said, did you ever kill any Germans? He said he didn't remember. And so I said, well, you could shoot them. Or, I said, you could take and you could put a knife on the end of a rifle and stab them, or you could just stab them with the knife, you know. And you could tell it irritated him a little bit, and he said, no, sir. He said, you never used your knife. Never used your knife. He said, if you did use a knife in the trenches, he said, the Germans, he said, they find you with a knife in your hand, bloody, they'd kill you. They'd just shoot you right there and then. No mercy given. He said, what you did, he said, they supplied you with a small shovel. A small shovel. And he said, that's what you carried. And if you got into hand-to-hand -hand combat, you used your shovel to fight your, for your life. He said, like a club, you'd pound on the enemy. And he said, and when you got done killing him, you wiped off the blood off the shovel. Because if they caught you with a shovel with blood on it, they'd still shoot you. You bet. But if they thought you was digging down, getting under the gunfire with a shovel, they'd probably take you as a prisoner. A shovel saving your life in the way of a self-defense tool. Maybe you hadn't heard of that before, but that's what he said they did. That war was to end all wars. It didn't. My father and his brothers fought in World War II and then Korea, some of them. And needless to say, it was a crazy world that we live in. My father, long time back, said that uh, until they start at the top in these wars and kill the leaders on down, he said, maybe that'll stop the wars. But he said, killing privates by the millions don't stop a war. And he said, I've seen cities just turned into rubble and he said it didn't stop the war. He said they started at the top and worked their way down and he said I bet that it stopped the wars a lot quicker. I have kind of a twist to that myself. I've always said that if they take all the billionaires, there's about a thousand of them in the world right now, put their names in a hat and every week a war is raging in this world, they'd pull out a name and then they'd take that billionaire and they'd kill him. Let's see how long the wars would last then. All sorts of things you could do to stop wars, but if we don't get it right pretty quick, this old war is going to be a burned out cinder. And it won't be your fault or my fault, it'll be the leader's fault. For they know better, and they realize there are better ways. And if they're doing it wrong, it's because they're paid to do it wrong. Just like taxes, for an example. In the government, there's no question that they're smarter than this old ranch hand. And so if I can figure out a way to run this government with no taxes, and yet still have the same basic government, no taxes needed by any of the average person, 
then you know they have it. And if they aren't doing it, it's because they're paid not to. We need to change the way of thinking today so that the future will be better. It's kind of like a, a buddy of mine that golfs. He said, you know, you can take your old golf swing, and if you turn that club just ever so slightly, any direction, he said it'll send that ball a long ways, and down the road, he said, it will be way off or right on by just the slightest slant. Maybe it's time that we use the same technology and mind thought of just a little bit of correction can make so much difference down the road for future generations. A world without war. A world without taxes. Rate this film.